Welcome to 6th grade. Uh, this is podcast number two of chapter one. And for this one, uh, we will be looking um, over uh, the objectives. The objectives for this lesson are um, talk about how hunter-gatherers lived uh, during the Stone Age and learn about the beginning of farming. And again, you're responsible for knowing the vocabulary words, and we've kind of talked a little bit about this in class, uh, but we're going to move uh, get a little bit further uh, in it with this. All right. So prehistory again, still on prehistory. Um, so there are different ages of prehistory, right? And there are different ages throughout of history. Um, and they're quantified by really the technology that was developed at this time. So the first age uh, that we have, uh, we have the Ice Age and then we have the Stone Age. Um, so this is where earliest uh, human culture is found. And this, in the Stone Age is a period of time in which humans made tools and weapons out of stone, hence the term Stone Age. All right, there are three periods to the Stone Age. There's the new, the old, and the middle. Um, and we, we'll get more about, into that in the class. Um, but during this time, man really discovers fire. Okay? Um, at first, it was used for warding off dangerous animals. But then they thought, hmm, maybe I could use this to actually heat up my food instead of eating raw, unhealthy meat. Um, and then they also, the first fire, we don't really know how it was created. Um, we just know that eventually they figured out through friction, um, the heat that's caused by the friction, they're able to create fire. And then um, with fire also leads to them being able to settle and live in new areas, areas that maybe before were too cold for them to live in or maybe there are too many animals. Um, but because of this um, ability to now move and settle in new areas, um, we have better developments of tools. Um, and we have people moving to places that actually have food instead of constantly migrating from place to place. People are starting to settle down. And so then this allows them to reach uh, to all the corners of the world, just kind of how we talked um, at the end of last vodcast about uh, the migration of people and following animals. Um, this is kind of where all this uh, comes from. All right. Uh, so early farmers during the New Stone Age uh, people began to grow crops. All right? And at first they didn't do this. Remember, they're hunter-gatherers. So they would, um, you know, go along from place to place and, and have eat the food that was there. And then once it was gone, they would leave and come back another time to once it was full again. Um, so this led to a term of people called pastoral nomads, um, which would basically they raised livestock and moved from pasture to pasture. All right? From then, though, uh, they developed um, more into farming. And men, you were the hunters of the clan or the family, and women, sorry to say it, but you planted the crops and you farmed the fields. So the men, the only thing they really did was go and hunt, and then they'd kick back and relax when they weren't hunting because their job was done. It was the women's job to pretty much do the rest of the um, business. So sorry again. Um, so here, you know, we, we moved from this pastoral nomad to farming. and people started figuring out that, hey, you know, if I can plant crops and I can settle down and I can actually have more food uh, throughout the year instead of hopefully, hopefully going someplace and having enough food. Um, so they discovered fertile soil um, and it drew farmers to certain areas, right? That's why we see large populations, uh, you know, in ancient Egypt, uh, around the Nile River, uh, in Mesopotamia, you know, we'll talk about the Fertile Crescent. Uh, so, you know, these are areas that have very fertile soil and which drew people there to begin with. Um, the soil, the water, and then the length of the growing season were all things that were considered when, they were, when we start talking about farming. All right. um, plant selection, that was another important task in the farming is, you know, what kind of plants do we plant? Do we plant plants that aren't going to grow very well or are we going to try to take the best ones and make them better and that's what they did ultimately is because again you want to have you know the best food that you can for your civilization uh, so they take the biggest seeds from the best tasting plants and they keep reproducing those plants uh, which leads to the domestication of plants or where pretty much you take a wild plant and you harvest it and then you um, save the seeds and you plant them again and plant them again and plant them again until eventually it's not a wild plant anymore. It's a domestic plant. All right. They also did this with animals as well. All right, so which leads us to the raising animals. All right, again, you know, they learned how to tame wild animals. Uh, cows eventually were wild at one point, so were horses, so were deer. Um, 
So were dogs and cats, okay? All goats, sheep, you know, all were wild animals at some point in time. But over the years, they've learned to domesticate them just as they had with plants uh, so that they could have a reliable source of meat, milk, wool, and skins, all right? And so, you know, the challenge of this is that many animals have been captured and tamed, all right? So think about, you know, if you lived some 40 to 50,000 years ago and you walked out your back doors, think about all the different wild animals you could see. You know, today when you go out your backyard to see a wild animal, you might see a chipmunk or a raccoon or a squirrel or some birds. You know, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, maybe if you live further out in the country, you can see deer and coyotes. Uh, but for the most part, you know, what we see are animals that weren't deemed necessary to be uh, domesticated because, you know, frankly, there's not much meat on a squirrel or chipmunk. Well, maybe in my backyard, but who's to say that? Okay, so to kind of wrap this up here, I know it's fast and furious, um, but you'll notice that there's this central area here, um, and we'll talk about this later. This is what's called the Fertile Crescent here. But here is where um, people start to harvest crops and to domesticate crops. And we're talking, you know, up here 10,000 BCE to 1,000 BCE. So we're talking anywhere from... 1,000 BCE would be over 3,000 years ago. So we're talking, you know, 13,000 years ago. Uh, this develops, this begins to happen. So we have, you know, wheat and bar barley, cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs all start to kind of get domesticated here. Then those animals and ideas and people start moving out. And then we go to East Asia where they have um, other products they start to domesticate and in South, Southeast Asia you know they're finding products all around the world here that can grow in their climate and these are what they're domesticating so that they can have a more reliable food source which is what they need is what they want is this more reliable food source all right so hopefully you took really great notes and we will talk more about this uh, later in class and do some more activities on it have a great night